I'm going to take this copter from Betaflight 241 to 261, and in the process I'm going to show you how I go from version to version without uh, losing my configuration and making sure I'm aware of any new options that are present in the new firmware. Of course, you can always just read the release notes and read the wiki, but this is a, a more certain way. First, I'm going to go to the firmware flasher, and I am going to flash the firmware. And we're going to try just flashing it, yeah, without going into bootloader mode. We'll see how that works. I always do a full chip erase. Uh, I prefer to do a full chip erase, even if it's possible to do an upgrade while maintaining config. I don't mind pasting in the config, and it just ensures me that everything is clean and ready to go, and nothing's been copied over that shouldn't be copied over. Let's try this flash and see if it'll work without going into DFU mode. Oh, oh good. Yeah, perfect. When I first flashed this board the very first time, I had to use the bootloader button to go into DFU mode. It does seem to have worked just fine this time without. Okay, it's successful. Notice that I also, for the F303, you have to use manual baud rate 256K. It will not work if you use auto baud or, or the default baud rate. Now I'm going to connect, and of course everything is in default. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the CLI, and I'm going to dump. I'm going to copy all of that. And this is a program called Notepad++. It's a very useful program. I'm going to save that to wherever I save it to. The next thing I'm going to do is I have a plugin here called the Compare plugin, and I'm going to choose Compare, and it will show me these two side by side and show me any lines that are different between them. So you can see here that I have feature minus transponder, and that line is different here. It's not present. Now that's not really relevant to my install, so I'm going to skip it. Now here's a line that is different. So this section is different. And I can go through. So for example, I can see here that the beeper uh, entries are new. Right, they're not present here on the left. The map line is different. The serial lines are different. I can change those. And notice that it's highlighting exactly what about the line is different. Nothing different here. The aux lines are different, naturally. I will need to configure my modes. I can see that set EMF avoidance has been removed. This, this option has been removed. These options have been added, and so on. So I can go through here, and I can find exactly what's different and what's been added and removed. I can see that the error mode saturation limit is removed. And that's a great way just to familiarize yourself with exactly what has changed in the new firmware. And then, of course, you can go and you can look up these options in the wiki uh, to see what, the, what all they do. Also, it's a great way of managing to copy over your, your parameters without having to do a full config dump. So some parameters you might want to paste in and other parameters you might not want to. So for example, I'm going to start my tune from scratch using these default values. And these things are completely new. And so I'm going to have to start playing with those. So if I were just to try to dump this config in, it wouldn't work because some of these options don't exist anymore and other ones are not going to be the same. Whereas if I go up to the top, I can see that, you know, my ports and my modes, they're basically going to be the same. And that's how I do a new configuration. So I, I find the lines now that are, I want to copy over from my old config, like feature RX serial. So I can copy that line and that can stay. And we'll paste that in. RX serial is enabled. I'm just going to work my way down through here, feature telemetry. Yes, I want that. Okay, my map line and my serial lines, those need to stay the same. 
My aux lines need to get copied in, that's for sure. I'm going to want to copy over my min check and my max check. But definitely. My cam mix. I see that the default for max aux channels has changed from 4 to 6. I'm going to assume there's a good reason for that and I'm going to leave it alone. That's not going to change my configuration, so I feel safe doing that. Min throttle and max throttle copied in. These defaults are fine for our configuration. I'm not using either of those. This is a new option. It defaults to off. Since it's a new option, I might want to research it. But since it defaults to off, I can just leave it alone for now. Copy that. Oh, <laughs> I don't know what was going on there. There it is. We'll leave that option alone too. The default is off and that's fine. I'm going to leave these alone. Uh, this is tuning related, and anytime there are major changes to the PID controllers, I start with the defaults. I don't copy over my new values. And this is probably going to be affected by this, the loop time setting in the configurator, so I'm also going to leave that alone. I'm going to um, Super Expo Factor 30. So I'm going to leave. I'm so tempted to leave that alone, but I, I mean, I'm so tempted to reset that because I had my rates the same for so long, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it and try to adjust to these new rates, and we'll see how that goes. My fail-safe settings come over. I'm a little surprised to see that the default fail-safe procedure is off, but we'll go check that in the configurator to make sure that's come in like we expect. This is new. I'm going to leave that at the default black box rate denom of 3. Depending on what loop time I end up, I may need to change that, but we'll leave that alone for now. I like to change my RX fail settings to hold. I can discuss why I do that another time, but that's how I like to have them. That's a tuning related thing. I'm going to leave it alone. Going to leave this alone as well. My term, we're going to leave that alone as well for now. And I'm going to leave the PIDs alone. As for the rates, I am going to copy in my old rates. We'll start from there and we'll see how that goes. And there you go. So now I can double check my configuration in the configurator GUI just to make sure that everything looks correct. Ports, correct, all correct. Configuration, all correct, correct. I'm going to set the loop time to, I'm going to try setting it to 250. And we'll see how that goes. 4 kilohertz. And let's just double check anytime you mess with the loop time. Check the status. My CPU is at 11%, so I feel pretty good about that. I'll probably, I'll probably need to change the black box rate denominator. I try to target a black box rate of about 1 kilohertz. So since my loop is running at about 4 kilohertz, I think that means I need a black box rate of a denom of 4. I'm not 100% sure that there isn't another denominator. There's the PID process denominator and the black box denominator. Gyrosync denom of 2, PID process denom of 2. So actually the PID process, I think that means that the gyro is running at 8 kilohertz, but the gyro sync is running at one half of that or 4 kilohertz, and then the PID process is running at one half of that again, in which case I might be able to increase this number. Let's try a, well, let's look, I should look at the wiki is what I should do. Let's look at the wiki. Yeah, so the PID frequency is one half of the gyro frequency. So in fact, the 
So the PID frequency is one half of the gyro frequency, which is one half of eight kilohertz. So in fact, the PID process looks like it's running at two kilohertz, even though the gyro is running at four kilohertz. If that's correct, then my black box rate TNOM equals two, which gives me a one kilohertz black box rate. And we'll see if that works or if we need to change that. Check my modes, aux one, aux three, all correct. And my fail safe, Ooh, that's interesting. That's not right. That used to be air mode. Okay, so see, now we got a problem. So that used to be air mode, which is not what we want. Here we want air mode. Aux 14, it's just a garbage aux channel. It doesn't really matter what you use. You could easily just set that to aux 1. Just set it to the whole range and save. Okay. Not using Super Expo. Not for the time being. Oh, yeah, fail safe. Fail safe. Fail safe. We'll check fail safe. Stage 2 setting is to drop the copter. Okay, that's correct. Okay, so everything seems correct. We can now give it a, uh, a props off test to make sure that everything is working as it should be. Test the fail safe, test the arm, disarm, etc. There you go. Hope that's helpful. Happy flying.